Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial video, I will show you how to create a VFR flight plan using Navigraph charts. I will also show you how to export your flight plan to your favorite flight simulator. Let's get started. Please do note that as a prerequisite to this tutorial, a Navigraph subscription is required. Link to subscribe to Navigraph Charts is provided in the description section of the video. The first step is to set up Navigraph Charts for VFR flight planning. To do this, we are first going to click on this icon here and select the map preset that we're going to be using to create our VFR flight plan. Obviously, we are going to select VFR. This will switch the map to the VFR map preset, which is better suited for VFR flight planning. Next, we're going to click on the flights icon and we're going to select new flight. Next, we are going to select the options menu from the new flight icon. We're going to give our flight a name. In our case, we are going to be flying around Elstree Airdrome in the United Kingdom. We're going to type Echo Golf Tango Romeo to Echo Golf Tango Romeo. We are going to be cruising at a final cruise altitude of 2,500 feet. Next, we're going to select the flight mode to be VFR. From the general tab, we are going to select Echo Golf Tango Romeo as both our departure and destination airport. You will notice that Navigraph will automatically zoom into the airport. As you can see now, we have Elstree Airdrome in the United Kingdom selected as the departure and destination airport. We're going to zoom out a little bit here and take a look at the map. As you can see, we have the departure path for both runways available at Elstree Airport, runway 26 and runway 08. At this point, it is also recommended that you bring up the weather overlay. This is specifically useful for VFR flight planning as the cloud cover winds precipitation will affect your flight plan. Since we are going to be cruising at a final cruise altitude of 2,500 feet, we will leave the cloud cover selection altitude at 2,000. We are now ready to start selecting the waypoints for our flight. Let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at the map. Looking through the VFR map, you'll be able to see many dotted circles with either a triangle or an icon inside of them. Those are VFR waypoints. We are going to be selecting VFR waypoints along our path today for this VFR flight plan. You can also see a depiction of the VFR departure route for your selected airport as you can see here. We are going to assume a departure from runway 26 at Elstree Aerodrome. We are going to depart 26 and head over to the Alpha Waypoint. Pointing your mouse to any point on the VFR map and right-clicking your mouse button will pop up a Location tab. This will give you information about the current position. It will give you information about the airspace, the waypoint, as well as the VFR waypoint, as you can see here. We're going to click the exclamation mark and we're going to select Add to Route. And now you can see that we have a departure from runway 26 at Elstree Airdrome and heading over to the Alpha waypoint, which is approximately two nautical miles from the airport. Next, we're going to select the following VFR waypoint, which is the M1 Junction 8. Again, we're going to right click. And as you can see, now we have all the airspaces and we have the VFR waypoint, which is the M1 Junction 8. We're going to click that and we're going to add to route. Now it will ask you, where do you want to enter this waypoint before or after alpha? We are going to select after and click add. As you can see now, Navigraph Charge has automatically built the route for you, flying from Alpha to the M1 Junction and back to Elstree. We are going to fly further to the M1 Junction 9. Right-click, 
and we're going to look for the VFR waypoint. We're going to click that and say add to route. Again, we're going to add it after the M1 junction 8 and select add. Again, you can see the automatic routing that Navigraph Charts does for you. Next, we're going to go to the hide waypoint. Again, we select hide from the VFR menu, add to route, and we're going to select after. Next, we're going to go to Kimpton Hall, right click, and then we're going to select the Kimpton Hall VFR waypoint. And again, we can say add to route, after, and add. Similarly, we're going to go ahead and add the A1M junction. Right click, and this is the VFR waypoint, and add to route. For the purpose of our VFR flight today, we're going to pass by the golf course available here. So we're going to right click, and we're going to select the VFR waypoint, add to route. We're going to select add, and finally, we have our entire VFR flight plan, as you can see here. As you can see, creating a VFR flight plan using Navigraph charts is quite simple. Let's suppose that you want to make a modification to your VFR flight plan and that you want to fly to Canal Bend, for example, before you fly to Alpha. All we need to do is right click. We're going to select our VFR waypoint and click on Add to Route. Now we have to select where to place this waypoint. So the before and after right now applies to the golf course, which is this waypoint. But this is not what we want. We want to add it to the very first waypoint. So we want to fly to Canal Bend before we fly to Alpha. Now we're going to say before and click on add. As you can see now, we have modified the VFR plan to fly direct from L3 Aerodrome to Canal Bend and then fly to Alpha. Now that we have our VFR flight plan completed, let's export it to our favorite flight sim. To export the flight plan to your favorite flight simulator, click on the Export tab. As you can see, we have several formats, including Microsoft Flight Simulator, P3D, X-Plane 11 and 12, and many other add-ons. We're going to select Microsoft Flight Simulator. Next, you can select a destination to export your flight plan. I'm going to select this flight plan under my Documents folder, and we're going to click Save. The naming convention will always follow the departure and destination airports. We're going to click and Save. Next, we're going to export the flight plan for X-Plane 12. We're going to click here, and we're going to go to the X-Plane folder, X-Plane 12, and go to the Output folder. From the Output folder, we're going to select the FMS Plans folder, and we're going to click Save. Now it's time to load the flight plans into our favorite flight sim. We're going to begin with Microsoft Flight Simulator. We are now ready to load the flight plan using Microsoft Flight Simulator. To do this, we're going to click on the world map, and then we're going to select more from the menu at the bottom of the screen. Next, we're going to click on load save, and now we're going to select load from this PC. We're going to navigate to the folder containing our flight plan, in my case, Documents, Flight Plans. And we're going to select the flight plan and click on Open. As you can see, we now have an exact depiction of the flight plan we created using Navigraph Charts. Let's go ahead and load the flight plan into an aircraft at Elstree Aerodrome and take a look. We are now situated at Elstree Aerodrome Runway 26 and we have the flight plan ready to go. As you can see, the exact flight plan that we created in Navigraph and loaded into Microsoft Flight Simulator is now available through the Garmin device here on the Cessna 172. Let us now take a look on how to load the same flight plan in X-Plane 12. X-Plane 12 is loaded and we are currently situated at Elstree Airdrome Runway 26. We're going to bring up the default Laminar Garmin 530 and we're going to click on Flight Plan. Next, we're going to click on the inner circle and select our flight plan from the menu. As you can see, the first one here is the flight plan we're interested in. 
We're going to select on enter, and now we have the flight plan loaded in the Garmin device. As you can see, this is exactly what we've created with Navigraph charts flying from runway 26, going to Canal Bend, and then to the Alpha Waypoint and the rest of the waypoints we created in Navigraph charts. Before we bring this tutorial video to a conclusion, here is a tip that may be particularly useful for Explain users. Navigraph offers an in-game panel in Microsoft Flight Simulator. The same feature is not available in Explain, so it may be useful that you bring up Navigraph charts on top of your simulator to look at your moving maps, for example. One of the top questions asked during my live streams is how do you keep Navigraph charts on top of Explain while still being able to interact with the aircraft? To achieve this, it is quite simple. Simply go to the settings menu and make sure always on top is turned on. Now we'll be able to look at our charts while we're flying and interacting with the aircraft and the Navigraph charts window will never minimize. As you can see now we are airborne, we are able to see the moving map, Navigraph charts is not minimizing, you can place this anywhere you want, we can minimize the screen as well and you can also interact with the different aircraft instruments without having to minimize the window. Well folks, this pretty much brings us to the conclusion of this Navigraph tutorial video. I hope that you have found it useful and insightful. As usual, if you have any questions, please do post them in the comments section below. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.